Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing excellent. As you saw from our latest video, we had a bit of a crash with the FC and we're almost done with the repairs. There's more than fixing the crash damage to do on the FC that we found out after Dino Day. So, I've already got a few things done here, but we need to correct the way our bypass air control valve is set up and our catch can, our oil catch can. And I had to replumb the brake booster uh, vacuum line with the correct type of vacuum line. So let me show you what we're gonna be working on. So, first thing first, I did this off camera. Um, it's not super exciting, but this is the vacuum routing from the brake booster. So here's our brake booster inlet our check valve, a hard line, and then it goes back across to the intake manifold. Now, before, this is with the correct type of hosing. This is a Gates product, same people that make the high quality belts for our alternator. This Gates hose is much thicker. Let me see if I can find a piece of it here. All right, so here we go. So this is what I was using which is more of a thinner walled vacuum line. Okay, and this is what I should have been using and I am now using. So this is gonna hold up much better, won't crimp, won't pinch off. So we might not uh, be in danger of losing power brakes at any point. And I have to say that mounting the hard line there and using this better hosing only with the car just idling where it does create a vacuum uh, I have to say the brake pedal feels better so I'm not sure why maybe I had something wrong uh, with the way it was working maybe there was a leak but that's done so the next thing that we have to work on is this oil catch can right here so this oil catch can is getting a feed off of the center iron on the block um, from the oil system and it's just not adequate enough. And there's two reasons why it's not working well. So if you saw the Dino Day video, uh, during Dino Day we actually had the oil cap off. And some of the shots from the front of the car you'll see there's lots of smoke and blow by coming out. Uh, because that's the only way we could relieve the pressure from the oil system. Otherwise we'd get tons of smoke from the exhaust and that was not good. So this oil catch can uh, is just a generic one off eBay and I think for most purposes it'd work okay. Um, but we're running, especially now on E85, such high levels of boost that we need to find a better solution. So two things are going on like I mentioned. This is a Dash 6 hosing. Um, and this is just the same vacuum line I just showed you that I was using for the brake booster, which is about 5 eighths. This is not big enough diameter to handle the volume to relieve the pressure. Second thing is, I thought it'd be cute and recirculate it, because like the EGR system on your car, the blow-by can get sucked back in. But what's happening when we hit boost, since this is coming off the intake manifold, this is pressurizing with a full boost and pressurizing this can so that there's nowhere for the pressure to go. What I have here to fix that is a nice, wonderful little kit that uses Dash 10 size fittings. Excuse me, let me get this organized here. Uses Dash 10 size fittings, so much bigger flow, and is atmospherically vented. And then, oh, that's here. This is the top. And then it actually just drains from the bottom with a little valve, which is here. So that's pretty cool. The kit comes with some nice dash 10 line. You can see that's a nice big diameter in there and some fittings to get this chunky boy all connected. So we're gonna be working on that. Uh, next part of that install is also in this bunch of stuff here is the bang. This weld on fitting. So this is a steel fitting for dash 10 and we need to get that fitting onto the side of the oil filler neck right here. So I'm going to be removing that. We're going to get a hole drilled out there. Jeff's going to help me weld this on. So we got to get that prepped so he can take care of that for us. 
And then, next item on the list is this. this right here is where we're getting air in and this uh, idle air control valve or bypass air control valve whatever you want to call it is controlled by the Haltech to give us a better idle and to stabilize the idle if you're sitting at a light and say the fan turns on it takes extra draw from the system this will compensate for that to keep the idle up it also helps with cold starts and so on but this obviously is not filtered and in order for it to be the most stable, it needs to get the air from the charge pipes on the intake system. So we're gonna need to attach a nipple to the back of this and run a length of line back and forth so it gets it all in a closed system and we don't have any debris going in there. So luckily, I have this aluminum fitting. This is actually a leftover fitting from this catch can kit. So this one I already uh, grabbed. It came with a variety of fitting sizes and it fits same diameter right there. So that's perfect. So I'm going to chop off this part of the threaded bit and just get a hole and then Jeff can weld this part on as well. So I'm getting my welding job batches queued up for Jeff so that we can get them installed. So let me pop these pieces off and then we'll get started. So here's our two culprits right here. We need to get this tapped in for our BAC and we need to get this slobbed off and get that 10 AN fitting on here for our oil catch can slash breather. And then we're going to need to unplug some of the things we have routed for this other oil catch can right here and get that taken care of. And just in general, this is a little PSA. You can see this little cap I have here and this didn't blow off at dyno day because we had the cap off but these type of vacuum line block offs that you can get at AutoZone or O'Reilly or anything these little silicone ones do not hold nearly enough they're a little too shallow and they're too loose so if you're going for those grab this kind this thick rubber you can see they're much longer as well so you can get them all the way over whatever you need so if i were using one of these on here it'd go much further down and then you can also throw a zip tie over it as well the uh, RX-7's upper intake manifold usually has the uh, commonly called rat's nest of connections and there's like three or four nipples on this side and three or four nipples on this side that are all small uh, vacuum line connections and Dino Day before we got these more these thicker rubber style on it was just every few times we do a pull one of those would just fly off as soon as it hit boost so get those on there get some zip ties on them save yourself a lot of trouble so <clears throat> I'm gonna work on that now but first I'm gonna take these back to the fabrication station in the backyard and see if we can make our holes things first let's get our aluminum charge piping drilled out for this baby right here so I already got my center punch in there let's see if I can do this one-handed okay so she walked around a little bit so it's a little off center which is okay so I'm gonna go ahead and retrace my little marks here one second so we got to realign for what we're aiming for for our stepper bit. So we'll go ahead and start that now. Oh. Yeah, I need a new drill, but let's see if that does it. Beautiful. <clears throat> a little bit of extra space there, so Jeff will have to fill that in. I'm sure he'll love that, but there we go. Boom. So now I'm actually going to take this threaded part off because it's not going to be threaded in. It's going to be welded in, and we'll just hand that off to him after that. Got this shaved down, so that'll be nice. Neat little fit. God, that thing's still hot. I already burned myself. Now you can't really see it, but it hurts. Anyway, now comes the delicate procedure of cutting this off. So I think I'm going to leave myself a little bit of margin for error 
not go too deep and then use that same stepper bit to get a hole to accommodate this guy right on the side right there this is going to be pretty cool when it's done so apparently this is just painted or powder coated steel right here so once we get it uh, drilled out and cleared back we should be able to weld that guy right on there okay so with the angle grinder i was able to get it to right here so now we want to chase it out to at least this interior diameter there so it looks like oh, about one two three four to the fifth one okay let me give it a try so the stepper bit did really well but if you can see here this is a little bit beveled and I think the best idea is to have this small lip sit inside here and we can't quite get there because when I start drilling through it wants to impact the other side of this obviously and we don't want to drill all the way through it so it's a pretty good size hole but we want to make a nice surface to be able to weld that together so I think what I'm gonna to have to do is grab my calipers get the exact measurement on this diameter and then mark it out with a white paint pen and try and dremel it to that size so I'll be right back with a few more gadgets I got this marked out to the diameter approximately where it'll accommodate this inner lip but shouldn't let this part pass through yep that looks about right I measured it with the calipers here so now I'm gonna hit it with this nice looking Dremel bit right here and it should come out like better okay I think I got it so I put that in there that in there it's nice and then Jeff can decide when he's welding it <clears throat> whether he wants it to be flush on one and fill or fill both sides but that's basically how good we're gonna get with this flat plane on this round surface so now I'm gonna take the flapper disc and clear away all of this uh, coating so that there's a nice surface to to weld to here we go this should be ready to roll Let's see if i can do this with one hand holding the gopro show you yep there we go and then that'll go right on there make us a nice fat opening for our oil catch can so Jeff's going to take those things off, get those fittings welded on so we can install the new items. Um, let me show you the difference between the new catch can and the old catch can. So here's our old one. Um, much smaller, still good design. We can use this in another application. Um, but you can see the diameter there versus the diameter there. And this is 750 milliliters. So this is like your party store behind the uh, counter bottle of liquor full of uh, whatever blow by comes out so now the question is we got to figure out where I'm gonna be able to mount it and we can start mocking up some lines so this thing fully dressed up is really big um, it's tall and I want to have access to this drain plug if possible so that's what I'm having the most trouble figuring out where I want to put this thing now over there on the other side of the turbo there is a lot of room but <clears throat> then I need to run the line all the way from the oil neck here all the way over there now that being said this line right on top is the old catch can line but again that wasn't working so still searching to figure out where to put this big old thing I found a home it's the same home as the old one was but there is some mounting points further down and it's obviously a little angled right now and I just have it in with one bolt but I just want to test fit it here so I can run the lines and get those made but um, basically I can make a little bit of a bracket that comes off of two mounting points down here and it'll be a little more upright but this is a good place to get it test fitted um, I'm still waiting for a fitting in the mail to block off one of these ports because you can have two come in um, but I don't have two outlets so we're gonna go ahead and do that I went ahead and uninstalled the old pieces and put those nice vacuum caps on there there's another one down here you can't see it because it's so far in there um, and now I'm going to start messing around with my dash 10 an fittings 
So this right here is going to be for the idle air control valve. It's going to run from the, the vent into here, and this is for the intercooler piping. We're just going to take this out, flip it around, weld it in place. And this is the oil filler neck with another filling here, and this is going to go to the oil cash can. So we're just going to weld these in real quick. See a bumper in work here. Progress is being made. Jeff really came through with getting these parts welded on for our little custom kit. This has uh, been painted up so it matches. Let's see how she looks. Come on. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm ready to get these pieces back on the car. So let's get these babies back on. All right, custom pieces are in. This looks awesome. And we've got our new nipple here. So now, time to run some hoses here. Our A hose, hopefully not more than one. And get this, some fittings mocked up to our old catch can. So we got everything hooked up. We got our 90 degree fitting right here coming off of the nicely welded on bung. Comes along here, this strut tower brace is incredibly useful. Not only holds the throttle cable, now it holds the line for the oil catch can just have to make sure that it doesn't ever drop down and hit this alternator but you can even think about running it behind but it might be too tight of a turn there anyway so it comes down here goes right in here have it mounted temporarily again right here nice and snug but it's uh, not going anywhere and uh, this is the bottom fitting just sticking up. I have a cap coming in the mail probably in the next day or so to cap that off. But right now, just in case we're testing it, if it wants to shoot anything out, that's sitting like that. And then for the nice uh, BAC routing, I know it's just zip tied on right now. It's just for testing. I just don't have the right size hose clamps at the moment. But that dash 10 line fit nicely around those two. So I think we can fire her up and see how she likes idling with the idle control test uh, connected right there. Not really ready yet to shove a bunch of boost through her because we want to get obviously this finished and road tested. But yeah, it's looking pretty good so far.
All right, that's really nice. God, I can't wait to drive her again. Hey, as soon as we get those two front tires in, you can take her around the block. Yeah, but we really need to get the bash bar and the bumper done. All right. Well, I think that'll about do it. We got the brake lines replumbed, looking good. We got the idle air control valve or the BAC pulling off the charge pipe, which is perfect. And just it's so much quieter. Yeah, I just need to get the hose clamps to hold that in place. And we've got the beautiful new catch can routed. So just need to do some final touches on that with capping that off, getting the hose clamps there, and then probably just do another zip tie or so to make sure that stays where it is. And if that uh, placement works good and everything flows right, then we'll make a more permanent mount that looks a little bit better and more professional. But I think that'll do it for today. Piece by piece, she's coming back together. Hopefully in the next video, we're putting the bash bar on and getting the bumper on once we get it painted. And we'll be back on the road and hopefully with some tire shredding content coming soon. 300 CX versus RX-7. Yeah, that'll be a fun day. Thank you. I hope you're ready. That will be an insane day. Because uh -huh. both of these cars are literally insane. And it's crazier to see which one's more insane, which I hate to say it and admit it, but it's probably this one. She's pretty light. Yeah. But and if I can't get the braking and tires under control, then there's nothing I can do. But I think we're heading in the right direction. So please remember, like, comment, and subscribe. And when they ask you, tell them you want more.